Hi there, it's Mr. Rhodes on here again. I've got another video today where I'm going to show you how to factor complex trinomials. And uh, I'll show you the first one. I'll give you an example here. So, first one I'm going to try is going to be 10x squared plus 17x plus 3. Now, the reason that this is a complex trinomial is because of that first term. There's a 10x squared. So, a complex trinomial, basically, it starts with an integer before the x squared. So in this case, I've got 10x squared. If it didn't have the 10 there, if it was just a regular just x squared, then that's a simple trinomial and I can factor it a different way. Um, because this is a complex trinomial, there's a different way I'm going to have to do it and it's called decomposition. So let me show you how I'm going to deal with this thing here. Again, I still use what's called the MAN method, and uh, MAN stands for Multiply, Add, and Numbers. Okay, uh, sorry, I was going to write numbers there. I just write it N. And what I need is I'm going to take the two outer terms, which is 10 and 3, and multiply those together. That's going to give me 30. So my outer terms multiplied together give me 30. The inner term is 17. So what I need to find is I need two numbers that are going to multiply to 30 and add to 17. So you can start thinking about what are the factors of 30. You know, 1 times 30, there's no way we can get 17 out of that. 2 times 15, well, there you go. Look, 2 and 15, I can get a 17 out of that, right? So there's my two numbers. It's going to be 2 and 15. Because 2 times 15 gives me the 30, and 2 plus 15 gives me 17. Now, what I've got to do with these two numbers is I've got to do what's called decomposition, which means I need to split the middle number up. So I'm going to take my 10x squared. I'm going to leave it exactly the same as it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this thing into two parts. So instead of 17x, I'm going to write 2x plus 15x plus 3. So you sort of split it into two. So these things add together to give 17. And uh, that's all you're doing here. Now, the order technically doesn't matter. Sometimes it's easier if you group things together that factor nicely. Um, you'll see that coming up. But in this case, it doesn't really make much difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the very first two terms. So I've got 10x squared plus 2x. I'm going to common factor what I can out of here. And what I can common factor out is I can take a 2 and an x out of both of those terms. Then what I'm left with in the first term, if I remove a 2 and an x out, I would be left with 5x. That's my first term. Out of the second term, if I take a 2 and an x out, I'm actually just left with 1. So if I common factor out the 2x, that's, that's left. It's just 1. So 2x divided by 2x is neither 1. From the second piece here, the last two terms, I could common factor out a 3. So if I take out a 3... Let's common factor 3 out of 15x. I would be left with 5x. And if I common factor 3 out of the last term, I'm left with 1. So what I'm, what I'm essentially doing is I'm going 15x, I'm dividing that by 3, and then the 3x, or the 3 I'm dividing by 3, and then what I'm left with is going to be 5x plus 1. That's basically what I'm doing uh, in my head over there. Now, when you do this process, these two brackets right here, this one and this one have to be identical. If they don't work out identical, I mean, then you made a mistake. I mean, they, they might be in a different order, hypothetically. Uh, you might end up with 1 plus 5x or something. But essentially, they have to be the same. If they're different, that means you made a mistake. So I know I did it right because those brackets are identical now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take those brackets, take them out. I'm going to common factor them and put them in the front. So it's going to be 5x plus 1. I'm basically common factoring out of both these chunks. So if I take the 5x plus 1 out of the first one, what I'm left with is just a 2x. And if I common factor the 5x plus 1 out of the second term, I'm left with just a plus 3. And that's my answer. So if you, if you were to factor this thing down, that is actually your result. So we can uh, check it and double check here. So let's expand and double check this one. So we got 5x plus 1 times 2x plus 3. And I'm going to use FOIL on this. 
So first, outer, inner, last. So the first is 5x times 2x is going to give me 10x squared. The outer is going to be 5x times 3, which is 15x. The inner is 1 times 2x, which is just 2x. And the last is 1 times 3, which is plus 3. And we're going to common, uh, or sorry, we're going to add up the middle terms because they're like terms. And we get 17x plus 3. And that is exactly what we started with. So we know it's the exact same things we had here. So we know that this actually did factor correctly. So again, in my opinion, the hardest thing of the whole process, again, is getting these two numbers right here. Those are hard, uh, depending on what the numbers are going to work out to. Uh, if you can get those, the rest of it is, is basically the same thing over and over and over again. And you got to make sure that your brackets you end up getting, these brackets right here, they have to be identical. If they don't match, then you have a mistake. Let's try and uh, we're going to do two, two more examples. Let's do an easier one than a harder one. Okay, next example here. Let's go with uh, example two. So we're going to go with 3x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, so this is a pretty simple one. So let's write out man on the side. And we need two numbers that will multiply to, in this case, they're going to multiply to negative 6. The reason it's negative 6 is we're going to go to 3 times negative 2 gives us negative, negative 6. It's the outer two numbers you're going to multiply together. The inner number is going to be negative 1. The 1's not written. That negative x basically has an invisible 1 in front. It's usually not written. So it's going to be negative 1. Then we got to figure out the numbers that are going to multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. And you can think about 1 times 6. Well, there's no way of doing it there. 2 times 3. That's possible. Because what we could do is we can go 2 times negative 3, right? 2 times negative 3 will give me negative 6. And 2 plus negative 3 gives me negative 1. So that's the numbers. 2 and negative 3. So we're going to split our numbers up. We need to split this middle term up here. I'm going to split that into 2. Now here's a case where it actually does kind of matter which order you go with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write the negative 3x first and the 2x second. And I did it in that order because I know that the 3s will common factor together nicely and the 2s will common factor together nicely. If I did it in the wrong order, it's going to be a bit weird trying to common factor. So this is easier in my case to put it in this order. So you kind of have to think ahead. How are you going to common factor this later on? So let's look at the first two terms. I've got 3x squared minus 3x. I could definitely pull out a 3 and an x. And if I do that, the first term would be left with just an x. The last term, if I divided out a 3 and an x, I would have negative 1 left over there. The next one, I've got a 2x minus 2. I can common factor out a 2. Okay, And if I common factor a 2 out of the first one, out of 2x, I'm left with just x. If I, t if I common factor a 2 out of negative 2, I'm left with just negative 1. And my brackets match, so I know that I'm doing this correctly. So I could common factor out the bracket. So x minus 1, that's the same in both terms. And I'm going to, what's left over out of the first thing is 3x. What's left over out of the second thing is 2. And that is the correct factoring uh, of this trinomial. So this is factored now. Okay, let's do a tough one here. Okay, this will be the last example. So this is going to be 14x squared plus 55x minus 36. Okay, when you see something like this, the first thing you want to do is see if you can common factor anything out. Maybe you can divide out everything by 2, for example, or 3. But in this case, nothing will common factor out. So this is genuinely a very tough one where we're going to find hard numbers. Like the example I had right here, these numbers are pretty simple to get. Honestly, you probably do it in your head. But this is going to be hard. So I'll show you how I'm going to tackle this thing. Okay, so to multiply, what I actually have to do is figure out what 14 times negative 36 is. And I cannot do that in my head. So I'm going to actually flip to my calculator on my iPad here. So 14, uh, whoops, sorry. So it's 14 times 36. So 504, let's go back there. So it's actually negative 504. I'm doing it on the screen just so you can see what I'm doing here instead of using my calculator. 
the middle one's going to be 55. So this is tough. I need two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 504 and add to 55. That's a challenge. So let's take a look here. Okay. So let's go back to the calculator. And we're going to start with the 504. And the first thing to try is divide by 2. Okay, so we get 2 and 252 as my factors. There's no way I can add those together to get 55. So it's got to be higher than that. So let's go 504 again. And we'll try dividing maybe by 4. Okay, 4 and 126. There's no way I can add and subtract those to get 55. So it's higher than that one. 504, let's try 6. Okay, so 6 and 84. There's no way that'll work either because 84 minus 6 will not give me 55. Okay, so let's try even higher. Try 8. Okay, 8 and 63. Look at that. What's 63 minus 8? Let's check that out. 63 minus 8. 55. So 63 and 8 are going to be the factors, right? Because 63 times 8 gives me the 504. And 63 minus 8 gives me 55. So that's the number. So sometimes you got to do trial and error to do this. So we're going to go with 63 and negative 8. Those two numbers, there's no way I'm going to be able to know that in my head. There's no times table that goes that high. Honestly, it's just trial and error. And I was using even numbers because 504 was even. So I tried dividing by 2, tried dividing by 4, tried by 6. And it should work out. Now, if it actually doesn't, again, you may have to use quadratic formula or something else. But if it's a uh, complex trinomial, generally it will work. And uh, you just trial and error until you get your numbers. Okay, so let's take these numbers here. And we're going to split that middle term up. So 14x squared. We're going to split this guy right here in two. And I don't know what will work better. I think the 8 will divide nicely with the 36. And the 63 might go with the 40, 14. I'm not sure. We'll try it out. So let's put the 63 first. It actually doesn't matter which order you do it in. It's just one way usually is easier than the other. Okay, let's take a look what we can do here. So out of 63, uh, what divides? Actually, you know what? 63 divides evenly with 3. I think I'm going to switch this. I think it's going to be a lot easier to do it the other way around. So I'm going to just rewrite it. Okay, so I just switched up the order, and the only reason I'm doing that is because 63, I don't know if that's going to divide evenly with anything nicely, honestly, other than 3. So let's do with the first two, 14 and minus 8. Um, probably the only thing I can take out of there is a 2 and an x. So we'll start with that, 2x, and if we common factor 2x of the first term, I'm left with 7x minus 4. And that does not divide further at all in any way. So I'm pretty sure that that's good. Let's check the next one. 63 and 36. I could definitely divide out a 3. So let's start with 3. And 63 divided by 3 would be 21x minus uh, 12. Now this term here, this 21x minus 12, that could definitely be divided by 3 again. So I'm going to actually re-divide this further. I didn't realize it could go further. So I'm going to common factor out another 3 out of here. So if I common factor another 3 out of this bracket, I'm left with 7x minus 4. Okay. And I'm going to now just combine these. And there we go. Our brackets match up. That's exactly what we needed. And it took some work to get there. I didn't see right away, but I noticed at this stage right here, this could be divided further. So I had to actually common factor out another three. I had to take that three out. So it's, it, you know, sometimes it's not always straightforward, right? Okay, so we got our brackets the same. So let's write 7x minus 4. We're going to put that in front. And we're left with 2x plus 9. And that actually is the correct answer. So I, I worked it out already ahead of time. I know that's the right answer. 
And uh, this example three here, this is definitely like a level four type of question. It's not an easy one, right? I had to use the calculator to do trial and error and solve this. Um, but I hope that the process of doing this actually makes sense to you. You're going to use decomposition to split up the middle term. And then you're going to make common factors. And that should help you to uh, work these questions out.